Hello my fellow FNAF fans, today I am going to be going over my observations of the Fazbear's Fright story Count the Ways. So recently, finally, I read the story Count the Ways in the first Fazbear's Fright story and thought it was really good. I thought the characters were fun to follow and Millie in many ways was very relatable in her way of thinking and her feelings about life and death throughout the story. Now I know what you're thinking of me. How the heck have I not read this story yet? Aren't I in a cult of Funtime Freddy? Isn't he my god? Well, no, he's not. But it is pretty disappointing that I haven't read the Fazbear's Fright story that centers around my favorite character in FNAF for over two years since it came out. However, now that I have read it, I can finally start doing my analysis on the interesting details that I found while reading the story and want to display it here for you guys today. So remember everyone to like and subscribe, you know the drill, and let's get on with my observations about the Fazbear's Fright story, Count the Ways. So what parallels can we make about this story that we can gather? Sure, the story itself is pretty straightforward. Millie has issues with her life and decides to crawl into Funtime Freddy. But what kind of parallels can we draw from these characters in the, into the game timeline? Well, from f quite a few aspects that I can gather, Millie seems to be a parallel to Elizabeth, and here is why I believe that. Number one. At the beginning of the story, we learn that Millie is not that popular in school and had only one friend with her that left her for some more popular bratty girls. Due to this, she was often bullied and called, get this, Dracula's Daughter, and this content we can get from the story is extremely suspicious. The Dracula's Daughter thing had started because she'd been carrying around a paperback copy of Bram Stoker's Dracula, and one of the popular jockey guys said, oh look, how sweet, she's reading a book about her dad. And if this rings a bell to anyone, it should. It's a direct reference to The Immortal and the Restless in which it stars Vlad, a vampire who sounds a ton like Dracula and who doesn't want his child. And if anyone was skeptical about The Immortal and the Restless parallel, we get outright confirmation of it later in the story. The kids at school call you Dracula's daughter, don't they? Well, what you might not know is that the character of Dracula was inspired by a real person. A person named Vlad Dracula. But he's better known by his nickname, Vlad the Impaler! <laughs> Therefore, because Vlad from The Immortal and the Restless is most certainly trying to give us some insight on William Afton and Mrs. Afton's relationship, could it also be explaining that the child in that story is Elizabeth? I mean, while in this story Millie's parents were never the best parents to her, Millie does explain that they did provide for her and make her feel loved. Could this be the case for the Aftons? Sure, William is an absolute maniac and Mrs. Afton was likely killed by him, but could it also be possible that they really were just trying to look after her and didn't do the best job they possibly could? And Ballora saying in Sister Location, all I see is an empty room, could that imply that Mrs. Afton wanted to help her but didn't know how? It leaves open quite a few interesting possibilities. Number 2. For those who don't know what the title of the story is referencing, it's referencing the poem made by Elizabeth Barrett Browning called How Do I Love Thee? And in this poem, just like every other piece of literature in the story, connects it to Millie's idea about wanting death and how it might help her escape from the pain of the world. However, the more interesting thing is what she says right after she mentions the poem. She had read the poem before and thought of it just as pretty words, but now she could appreciate the feelings behind the words. Strong feelings for the rare person who truly understood you and whom you understood in return. While, yes, this could be a loose connection, it's weird how it also seems that the literature that is referenced in the story by the certain character connecting to it always seems to mention a name in the series. Not boiling. Well, understandable. By all accounts, it is a nasty way to go. People who observed boilings during the Henry VIII's time said it was so sickening they would prefer to see a beheading! Again, these observations may not be holding up, but there are a total of three names mentioned that have equivalent names to characters in the series that seem like they have some resemblance or connection to. Funtime Freddy's reference to Henry VIII could be a small connection between Grandpa and Henry in the main series. Clearly, Funtime Freddy is not happy that he's been collected by Grandpa, and Grandpa's character has some connections to Henry. They both seem obsessed with collecting robotics and working in workshops, and the stuffed bobcat at the beginning of the story seems to have a loose connection to Theodore in the books. We also get some interesting connections between Henry and Funtime Freddy when he mentions this. I sat in the salvage yard for ages before your grandpa found me and brought me here, where I've just been sitting too. I'm bored out of my skull. Salvage yard, you say? Could that be paralleling Henry's desire to bring the animatronics inside the FNAF 6 building to trap them and find a way to destroy them all? While, sure, Funtime Freddy doesn't appear in FNAF 6, Molten Freddy most certainly does, and Funtime Freddy is the head of that pile of the wires, and in this story, he is broken down. Number 3. Millie's death by Funtime Freddy could be paralleling Elizabeth's death by Circus Baby. I know this sounds stupid, but hear me out. 
Funtime Freddy does have a decent connection to Circus Baby in the sense that they are both Funtime animatronics, and Circus Baby's story is much more connected to Eleanor in the series, so making parallels with Circus Baby wouldn't be the easiest thing for the writers. Instead, they do the second best thing, do the only other animatronic that has a similar killing technique to Circus Baby and blueprints that match the chest cavity for a child in the entire series. DECAPITATION! He said it like it was such a happy word. There are many ways to chop up a head, of course, and if the blade is sharp enough, it's fairly quick and painless! This seems like a random line, but later when Millie agrees for Funtime Freddy to kill her in his chest cavity, she agrees to decapitation. Really? The voice sounded tremendously pleased. Good choice, it's a classic. I promise you won't be disappointed. <laughs> you won't be disappointed because you'll be dead. Now many people gloss over this since it happens so fast, but how does Elizabeth die in Sister Location? Pay very close attention. While it may be pretty hard to see, Baby's claw goes straight to Elizabeth's head, implying that when she got clawed, she was decapitated. This is one of the reasons why I believe that the blueprints for Circus Baby and Funtime Freddy are more x-rays than blueprints, since unlike the Funtime Freddy blueprint where you see a clearly visible head attached to the body, for Baby, it's much harder to see a visible head. Number 4. At the end of the story, we are clearly informed that, while Millie found her parents to be crazy, still realized that they were to make her feel loved. While I did touch on this earlier with the Immortal and the Restless observation, what I didn't mention is what Millie says right before she dies. Maybe her parents were different from other kids' parents, but they had always taken care of her basic needs, and they had always made her feel loved and safe. Millie wanted to be safe. And it seems like the only child that William Afton ever truly cared for was Elizabeth. He didn't go let her see Baby because he knew that it would kill her. Meanwhile, he didn't give a shit about what happened to Bite Victim or Michael. This would also explain why Elizabeth would feel guilty after she died by Baby and would want to make her father proud, as she says in FNAF 6. I mean, if I was a child and if I was killed by a giant robot machine, I would probably be angry at my dad for making that, right? But she isn't. But anyways guys, thank you all so much for watching this video. I know I haven't posted a theory video in a while, it's because I've been pretty busy with my life. I hope you guys enjoyed this one because I enjoyed reading the story and enjoyed writing the script for this. Also, I got a new mic recently and wanted to try it out for this video. I hope it sounded better than my last one. However, that's all for this video. Remember to stay tuned and as always, peace out.